Jake, finish up. You didn't pour my milk. That's because you never tipped me. <laughs> Why didn't you say something? I was waiting for a commercial. <laughs> You're watching a commercial. <laughs> oh. Then can I get one of those? Jake, look, cereal. <laughs> Mom, can you pick Elizabeth up after work? Oh, honey, I can't. I gotta get Jake from karate. Oh, but I have a night class and Van has scrimmage. Oh, can I get one of those? <laughs> okay, fine. I'll figure out a way to get Elizabeth. Oh, thank you, Mom. You bet. Oh, shoot. I am running late. Can one of you guys drop off Jake? Oh, I can. I've got to take Elizabeth to her checkup. Van, what about you? Uh, sure. Oh, wait, today? No, I can't. Oh, well, thanks for getting my hopes up. Jake, why aren't you eating? I don't have a spoon. Is this your first breakfast? <laughs> hey, Reba, you got a second? Sure, it's my slow time. I was just wondering if Jake could come over to our house for dinner tonight. It's kind of a special occasion. We're having cake and ice cream. What, Barbara Jean's got a new beanie baby? <laughs> Seriously? It's number 450, which is a state record. Can he come? Please. Well, I don't know. It's a school night and you'll have homework. Tell you what, I'll pick him up after school. Heck, I'll even drop him off now if you want me to. Okay, fine, but you owe me. <laughs> How's school? Good, but I really missed you today. <laughs> oh, I know you want something, but this is one fiddle that says, play me. <laughs> Look, is that a cat? Can we keep her, please? Oh, Kira, you know your father is deathly allergic to cats. What's your name? <laughs> Well, she doesn't have one yet. Hey, maybe you... Clap, clap, kitty cat. Okay. The third. Well, Mimi found her and her dad said they had to get rid of it. Well, I don't know, Kira. I'm not even sure my dad's really allergic to cats. He just doesn't want one. He told my mom once that he was allergic to minivans. Oh, he is, Kira. <laughs> we test drove one. Please, Barbara Jean. I don't want to sound all mushy, but there's just something about her. She seems like she's lonely. Like she needs someone to love her. Like a certain teenage girl? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well... Okay. <laughs> we'll keep her hidden in the attic. No. The catic. <laughs> That is a great place to hide a cat. In fact, it's almost... Say it. Come on, Kira. Perfect. Hey, Van. Oh, hey, Mrs. H. How's work? Oh, what can I say? It's a dentist office. People scream and we take their money. <laughs> Hey, Mrs. H, if I were to tell my professor that it's against my religion to study economics, would you give me a note to back me up? Van, for the fifth day in a row. No! Where is everybody? Oh, uh, Cheyenne's over at Mr. H's, and Jake took Elizabeth to a mommy and me class. Switch that. Jake's over at Brock's again? Well, man, did he do his homework first? Well, he didn't do mine, I can tell you that. <laughs> no, he didn't. See, that's the bad thing about Brock and Barbara Jean living right down the street. 
That and the fact that Brock and Barbara Jean live right down the street. Oh, and Mr. H called. He said that uh, Jake's going to be eating over there tonight, and he'll walk him home later. He's eating over there again? That's the fourth time this week. Well, you know what economists say. I have no idea. Please write me a note. And I bet they're not having healthy food. Yeah, I bet they're having cake and ice cream and cooking hot dogs on a stick in the fireplace. <laughs> hot dogs on a stick? <laughs> Do you know that for a fact? And I bet he's drinking sodas and playing video games all night long. Well, this is an outrage. <laughs> I should march over there and keep an eye on him. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll no. do it. I was a little busy and Brock took advantage of me. I'm going to put it into this right now. Be sure and bring back some hot dogs. <laughs> all righty, this has got to stop. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. <laughs> Amen. 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 Too late, Reba, but maybe if you hurry, you can stop the neighbors from saying grace. What's up, Mom? Up? Oh, nothing. I was just passing by and figured it'd be really funny if I just came running in here like a wild woman. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? That was really funny. Thank you, buddy. So, dinner, huh? What you having there, Jakey? It's Brock Ali. <laughs> Is there something you need, Reba? Like, maybe a doorbell? <laughs> My Brock, Ali. <laughs> Just eat your vegetables, bud. Reba? Actually, Brock, I would like to speak to you privately in the other room. About what? I guess I'm going to tell you in the other room. Excuse me. Bless you. What's going on here? It's called family dinner. It's a strange ritual that we do every night at six. Please don't report us to the authorities. Brock, Jake has homework, and I don't want him doing it when you finally drag him home when he's all tired out. Yeah, me neither. That's why I had him do today's homework before dinner. That's tomorrow's assignment. <laughs> Wait a minute. You get him to do his homework, and you get him to eat his Brock Ole. <laughs> And he still wants to come over here? Why? Well, I don't know, Reva. Maybe for the same reason that I like it when he comes over here. Yeah, why is that? Because... Uh, forget it, it's silly. Yeah, so were our wedding vows, but I listened. <laughs> because it feels like it used to feel when we were all together. It feels like a family. Hey, well, last time I checked, we're still a family over at my house, too. Look, I think his coming over here is a good thing. Now, can I please go eat my dinner? <sighs> you guys cooking hot dogs? Hey, Ma. What are you doing? Eating chips. Look at this. Family size. Even the snacks are mocking me. <laughs> We're not the family we used to be, Cheyenne. Oh, no. Grandma died. No! Brock moved out. Kira moved out. Jake would rather be over there. My whole family's slowly moving three houses that away. Well, Ma, if you're feeling lonely, Van and I could have more kids. It's just that at your dad's house, they have the kind of life I always thought I'd have. They sit down to meatloaf at six o'clock. We have leftovers between commercial breaks. We stink! <laughs> like normal people. Hey, Mom, look around. That's America. Over at Dad's are like a bunch of French people. <laughs> I feel like Jake's missing out on the kind of life that you guys had. I mean, you like the way it used to be, right? Of course I did, but we're all really busy. I'm not going to drop out of school to have meatloaf at 6 o'clock. 
And there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about it? There's always something we can do about it. We can try harder. Try harder how? We can start having dinner together. Ooh, gotta take a rain check. I got a study group and Van, he's really busy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, don't find anything for breakfast. We're going French. <laughs> Just like those people three doors down. <laughs> Well, Clap Clap's doing great up there. Oh, yeah. She's fine. I'm dying. Well, you're not cat-tagious, are you? Don't try to kiss up. Although, good one. <laughs> I'm allergic to her. I thought you owned cats before. The other Clap Claps. No. Sadly, Clap Claps wanted two were imaginary. <laughs> Number one died and... Number two ran away? <laughs> well, is dad sick too? No. You were right. He was lying, the cheat. <laughs> and if I was to keep it a secret from him, I would bust him on it. I would let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> How you feeling, honey? <laughs> I told you. I'm fine. <laughs> God help us if you ever get sick. <laughs> Kira, were you just up in the attic? We have an attic? <laughs> well, we need to call an exterminator. I just heard something running around up there. No, you did it. <laughs> yes, I did. I meant, yes, you did. I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> Meaning like, no. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> Sort of thing. Um, I've been forgetting to be more emphatic lately. You really should get some rest and give the exterminator a call, okay? Okay, I will. <laughs> okay, Kira, I'm sorry. Look, this cat has got to go. I have a puffy eyed snot machine. Just give me some more time. Do it in loving memory of Clap Clap the first. You know, today would have been her birthday. Hey, Dan. Who's home? Just me. Wait, don't tell me. You cut your hair. Listen, I brought you a little something. Oh, a cat? You can't bring a cat in here. Cheyenne is deathly allergic. Nobody's allergic to cats. <laughs> oh, yeah, her eyes get all runny, her face swells up if she's anywhere near one. Even a pretty little thing like you. Maybe she's just doing that because she doesn't want you to have a cat. Doing what? Swells her face? <laughs> On Van, please, you gotta help me. Just take me for a little while. <laughs> I'm very, very lovable. <gasps> she is awful cute. Oh, I always like dogs. How different could a cat be? <laughs> Hello, anybody home? It'll be our little secret. <laughs> DJ? Hey, sweetie. Hey, Cheyenne, you're home. You're home, Mert. <laughs> you're home. Ah! Barbecue. Ah! <laughs> he is such a good dancer. <laughs> Morning, Bob. Oh, honey, you look terrible. Van said I looked good. <laughs> Van lied. <laughs> you poor thing. Here, have a seat and I'll make you some pancakes. Oh, I can't eat anything. Oh, please, we can't have a family breakfast without any family, even if you are all yucky. Have a seat. <laughs> okay. 
And could you smile a little more? <laughs> See? Van was right. You do look good. <laughs> and there he is. Now, as soon as Van gets here, we'll all sit down to our nice family breakfast, like the family that we are. What's wrong with you? I bead they shut up. <laughs> There's your cereal, Jake, in a bowl, just the way you like it. Good morning, everyone. Hello, dear. Hi. Hey there, sport. What are you doing? Cheyenne filled me in, and I want to show Jake that there's still a daddy in this house. That paper boy threw this under the sprinkler again this morning. <laughs> the little cuss. Knock it uh, off and take off that sweater. Well, not in front of the little ones. <laughs> so, isn't this nice? It's been a while since we've all eaten together at the same time. So, Jake, how's school going, little buddy? I'm done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody gets to leave until we're all done. We're never going to finish. Can I turn on the TV? No, we're not watching TV. You know, I swear, young man, you keep looking at that thing and your head will turn into a boob tube. <laughs> we're going to talk. Now, who wants to start off the lively breakfast conversation? <laughs> well, what are we having for dinner? Why is everyone eating together? Oh my gosh, Grandma's dead. <laughs> no, we're having a family meal like families do. Okay, well, why is Van dressed like my science teacher? Here, why don't you join us? I can't. Barbara Jean told me she left my school book with you and I'd like to get it back. My school book? The black and white book? The cat in the hat? Hi. He's wearing a hat. The cat? Oh! I, I, the book. <laughs> right, Kira, I want that book out of here. It's making me sick. Bless you. Come on, Kira. We're having family time. Then turn on the TV. That's what I said. <laughs> We're not turning on the TV. Kara! Kara! <laughs> Your uh, school book uh, got out of its box. What? You lost my cat? <laughs> you brought a cat into this house? What, 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 what? No. <laughs> clap, clap. Was that some sort of dog? <laughs> Would you like a pancake? <laughs> hey, Van, I got a joke. Why is six afraid of seven? I must admit, I'm stumped. Because <laughs> seven, eight, nine. Oh, precious. <laughs> Guys, Ben, why are you still wearing that sweater? Well, it's chilly in the house and the sweater warms me. And you lost your receipt from the thrift store. And there's that too. Hey, Mom, what's for dinner? Hot dogs on a stick. <laughs> no, the three of us are having chicken. But, Jake, if you want to go over to your dad's for dinner, it's fine. No, I'll stay here. Hey, I mean it. You should be able to have a family meal. I do. Well, not over here. We're eating at all different times. And I eat with all of you. Sometimes I have four family meals a day. <laughs> I'm lucky. Wow. Well, that was a loaded wow. 
What's going on up there, Mrs. H? Well, all this time, I thought Jake was missing out on something. Well, Mrs. H, do you ever stop to think that maybe that wonderful little boy in there has the best of both worlds? I mean, he's got two great homes, three wonderful parents, and a whole mess of people who really love him. And isn't that the most important thing? I think so. How can that pipe make you look so goofy, but sound so wise? Goofy? Well, someone needs to put a nickel in the swear jar, young lady. Why don't I instead go make you a hot dog on a stick? Yes! <laughs> You look great, can't talk, you haven't seen me. Hey there, Kira. Oh. You forgot your lunch. Again. <laughs> oh, look, all pink and sparkly, just like Kira. <laughs> Mom. Kira, now you take that lunch box. And whatever you do, don't you lose it. <laughs> and if you do, pick up another one on the way home. <laughs> oh, okie dokie, Smokey. <gasps> oh my gosh. You just said okie dokie, Smokey. That's my favorite catchphrase. Oh, that is needle-rific. Yes, I did. I spoke like you. Remember me? <laughs> hey, hey, you guys want some waffles? Waffles? Never had waffles three days before a big game, and I'm not about to start now. You can't mess with the mojo. <laughs> How about you, Cheyenne? <laughs> Once again, see, no. Neither one of us can have waffles until Saturday. This can never change. You can't be serious. Oh, yeah. he is. Let me tell you something. Nothing makes you want to have a waffle more than someone telling you you can't. <laughs> it's like the forbidden waffle. <laughs> hey, I know it sounds silly, but as far as I'm concerned, my superstitions are a big part of my success. Like it has nothing to do with your ability? Surprisingly little. <laughs> so nervous about the football game. It's his first college start. I know how he feels. It's like me on the high school debate team. <laughs> a kid told me to shut up, and I froze. Well, not a kid, a judge. A kid and a judge. And some parents. Well, I'm nervous, too. I mean, there's three huge outlet malls in Dallas, and it looks like I'm only going to have time to hit two of them. Good luck to you in this very trying time. Thank you. Well, don't worry about anything on this end. Elizabeth is going to be very happy at can't sleep over at Barbara Jean's house of something snappy. <laughs> I'm still working on the title. Wait a minute, camp what? Can't sleep over at step-grandma Barbara... Darn! i tell you what, you keep working on the name, and I'll keep Elizabeth here. Mom, before you freak out, we thought it'd be fun for Elizabeth to spend the weekend with Henry. You're right. She should spend time with Henry. Mm -hmm. Have Barbara Jean drop him off. <laughs> Mom, we already told Barbara Jean that she could take care of her. Well, then tell her you didn't tell her. How hard is it to confuse her? <laughs> Look at how small my head is. <laughs> love that stuff, okay? Well, Reba, looks like you got all these extra waffles and just me to eat them. Perfect. You know what? I love to have my breakfast out on the patio. Ooh, eating outside. It'll be just like a picnic. You know, Brock and I used to go on those all the time. Of course, that was when we were keeping our love secret. <laughs> If squirrels could talk. <laughs> Apparently, nuts can. Hey! My roots are planted in the past. Though my life is changing fast. Who I am is who I want to be. A single mom who works too hard. Who loves her kids and never stops. 
No, 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 Mrs. H. You rolled my socks into a ball. Fold and tuck. Fold and tuck, bring you luck. Van, go long. <laughs> Honey, why did you unpack the umbrella? Well, what if it rains? Oh, we'll talk about the rain, Cheyenne. I fumbled the last time it rained. Think, think. Now I have to go have a grape soda so it doesn't rain. <laughs> Cheyenne, you have to put the ice in the glass. Hey, make sure it's not crushed ice. That might make it snow. <laughs> what do you think? It's my picture. <laughs> Gee, I was hoping you'd swallowed your head. <laughs> And I made a little one for my camper. Did you make one for Brock? I'm wearing mine under my shirt. Someone might want to steal it. Yeah. They're not only cute and 100% cotton, they're also practical. This way, if Elizabeth and I get separated at the mall, security will know who she belongs to. Why would you get separated? Oh, I know it's unlikely it will ever happen, but once bitten, twice shy, <laughs> you know. Okay, Barbara Jean, why don't you go grab Elizabeth? Okay. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You lost Elizabeth at the mall? <laughs> no. Oh, God. I lost Henry. <laughs> it was about a month ago. I just turned around and he was gone. Poof! Oh, I'll tell you what, that was the longest seven minutes of my life. Anyway, camp time! <laughs> <laughs> Does Van and Cheyenne know about this? Okay, look, before you overreact, it's not as bad as it sounds. He wasn't really lost. He was in the pants rack, two feet away, hiding from her. Uh, I've hidden from her once. I climbed a tree, ran into the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the humor in the situation. It's kind of funny, huh? Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> You're going to make a big deal out of this, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> I don't know why I keep coming over here. Hey, Brock, how's the wife? Great. We moved three doors down from my ex-wife. That was a good idea. Hey, maybe next time we can all just move in together. Yeah! <laughs> Too much phone? Too much phone! <laughs> I need to talk to you two about Barb Jean watching Elizabeth. Mom, we're not going to change our mind. Oh, I think you might. When you hear a little story, I call Barbara Jean lost Henry at the mall. What? Henry's gone? <laughs> no, she found him. Oh. Well, that's a short story, but very exciting. <laughs> Mom, we already knew about that. And she was so great, she found him in like seven minutes. No, she was not great. She lost him for seven minutes, see? The glass is half empty. Well, as long as it's not a bunch of foam, I'm cool with it. <laughs> Mom, nobody is perfect, even you. I never said I was perfect. It's just that certain people make me look that way by comparison. <laughs> I think you're perfect when you're awake. <laughs> What the heck does that mean? It means 16 hours a day, you are perfect. Okay, Van, come on, let's go back to the car. Cheyenne, your mother asked a question. The other day when we got home and you were watching her, you were asleep on the couch. Elizabeth was napping. I'd had a big old turkey sandwich and was watching golf. Shoot, I'm surprised I'm awake now. <laughs> Mom, we totally trust you, and we trust Barbara Jean. All things being equal, we chose her for this weekend. Ah, okay, not gonna rain. Let's hit the road. Okay, fine. You leave me no choice. Call your coach. You're grounded. What? Oh, man. Do you see what happens when you pour too much foam? Van, she cannot ground us. We're adults. And, Mom, we have to go. Please don't be mad at us. Oh, I am too mad. Until you get into that car, because I want you to be safe. So, call me when you get there so I'll know to be mad again, okay? So, be safe. Call me. Godspeed. <laughs> 
Are you mad right now? Godspeed! <laughs> okay, Barbara Jean, take good care of our little girl. Bye, Munchkin. Mm-hmm. Hey, Cheyenne, uh, here's that CD for the ride. Oh, thanks. And Van, I don't know why you think what you think, but the spell is hereby lifted. <laughs> um, thanks. Yeah. Okay, I can't afford a long goodbye, so let's get going. Bad luck? No, but crying before the game is. I'm gonna miss my baby. <laughs> All right, bye, you guys. We love you. Bye. 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 There we go. <laughs> Holly. Okay, Elizabeth and I are gonna go pick up Henry, and then we're gonna go to the zoo. Oh, won't that be fun? Oh, well, wait a minute. You're gonna take the two kids to the zoo? Well, that's like a mall with dangerous animals. Oh, it sounds exciting. I don't think you should go. The, the zoo is full of, um, drunks. Now you're thinking of the PTA. Hi, Reba. Wait, wait. I'm going with you. You want to go with me? I didn't say that. I said, I'm going with you. <laughs> oh, my gosh, a good day just got great. <laughs> I'm going to go grab you a T-shirt, Reba. <laughs> Don't hurry. You're going to the zoo with her? Oh, I get it. You two stroll by the alligator pond and then bump, splash, goodbye, Barbara Jean. <laughs> I'm going to keep an eye on Elizabeth. And afterwards, Barbara Jean will be exhausted, and I'll volunteer to take over babysitting. Oh, well, that's a pretty elaborate plan. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, maybe the baboons will kidnap her and make her their queen. <laughs> My feet are killing me. Oh, why they have to make the zoo so big? Why don't they just put all the animals in one cage? You don't have to walk ten miles. You know, I always feel sorry for them. Stuck in cages like that. There you go! <laughs> oh, Jakey, what was your favorite part? The pigeons. Well, those weren't really part of the zoo. Yeah, but one pooped on a guy. <laughs> Reba, I had a great time. We should do something without the kids, you know, just you and me. Maybe we could go hunting. <laughs> Ooh, not today. <laughs> I got a million errands to run before Brock gets home. Oh, well, why don't I watch the kids and put them down for a nap? No, that's okay. Oh, but I want to. No, I don't think so. You just get your sleep. No, the kids are going to sleep. I'm not going to. Yeah, unless there's golf on TV. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Reba, I can't risk it. You will fall asleep. You have a reputation. I have your... I have a... I have a reputation? <laughs> Bit of a temper, too. That has been mentioned. <laughs> I may lose my temper, but I didn't lose a child. <gasps> oh, how dare you accuse me of doing something I told you I did! <laughs> I don't want you staying alone with my grandchild. Is that why you came to the zoo with me today? To spy on me? I thought we were bonded. But you weren't bonded. You were... You were... James bonded! <laughs> well, I didn't go to the zoo to punish my feet. Great. You know what? Well, if I'm just such a terrible parent, why don't you watch her? You know, if you're just so perfect. Then it's settled. Fun. I will just take Henry and go. <laughs> or don't you trust me with him either? Goodbye, Reba. Barb Jean. What? That's Elizabeth.
You know what that means, don't you, Cheyenne? Somewhere on this floor, unlimited ice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's the coolest part about this hotel room? What? We get to leave stuff lying around the floor and mom can't yell at us. So, honey, what do you want to do first? I'm going to lay on this couch and watch TV. You're on your own. What are you talking about? Don't you want to go check out Dallas? It's awesome. <laughs> Look, you've really been on edge for the past couple of days, and I think if we stay cooped up in this hotel room, we're bound to get into a fight. Oh, yeah. A doozy. <laughs> Wait. You want to get into a fight? Yes. Us fighting is a good luck charm. Oh, yeah, then why aren't we rich? <laughs> Look, the day before the city championship, we had a huge fight. I had three touchdowns. The day before the Houston Scouts came... We had a fight. I got a scholarship. Tomorrow's my first start. I need our biggest fight yet. I can't believe this. You brought me here planning on us having a bad time? Well, you're off to a really good start, you big jerk. That's good. That's good. But let's not start off too early. I want to make sure we go to bed angry. <laughs> so my, my, my feelings mean nothing to you? I'm just I'm a, some part of your stupid mojo? Does that upset you? Yes! Then yes. You know what? I never want to talk to you ever again. Oh, come on, Cheyenne. I'm doing this for us. Get away! Cheyenne! Get away! Oh, I'm going to have such a great game tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Reba. Hey. Hey, Jake, how was the zoo? A pigeon pooped on a guy. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe the guy started it. <laughs> hey, listen, bud, can I get a moment with your mom? Okay, but tell mom you like your bean picture. She made it by herself. Reba. I know what you're going to say. And I'm sorry, Brock, but I think Elizabeth is better off with me. You know what? You're forgetting that I was here when you raised our kids. What's that supposed to mean? Gee, remember when Cheyenne shoved the bean up her nose? Yeah. Or how about Kira getting her head stuck in the banister? Or, or Jake swallowing a dollar fifty in change? Oh, that was my fault. I told him it was lunch money. <laughs> the point is, no one's a perfect parent, Reba. Okay, maybe I'm not perfect. Fine. But at least I'm not annoying. She goes around all the time saying these goofy things like... Okie dokie, Smokey. And, oh, those waffles are waffle-tastic. <laughs> so what? You don't want her to watch Elizabeth because she has a way with words? Yes, because it rubs off on people. It's already started with Kira. If I'm not careful, I'm going to have a two-year-old walking around asking for a cookie wookie. <laughs> That's the way kids talk. Yeah, but then they stop. She won't stop. Why is this suddenly an issue? She's always been like that. Heck, at our wedding, she said, I do, Magoo. <laughs> And that must have been very annoying for you No, I laughed Like you just did I didn't laugh, I scoffed huh. <laughs> Oh, come on, admit it She makes you laugh uh -huh. I laugh at her Okay, twice I laugh with her But way more at her Reba, you like her I do not Yes, you do No, I don't Yes, you do You're beginning to find her charming and funny and delightful Okay Maybe she's not an awful person. And maybe somewhere buried deep inside that queen of baboons <laughs> is a good heart. But other than that, she drives me crazy. I think what's driving you crazy is you're beginning to like her. You know what the problem with this divorce is? It's too nice. <laughs> Even I'm getting sucked in. Everybody walking around getting along. It's ridiculous. I know. Where's the hate? <laughs> So are you going to apologize to her? Yes. There's nothing she likes better than an apology wology. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Van, how'd it go? Oh, no, wait just a second. I'm going to put you on the speakerphone. Jake wants to hear, too. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Yes, can I have us a cheeseburger and some curly fries? Shh, he thinks it's funny. Go ahead, Van. Oh, it went great. I had two touchdowns and a fumble recovery. Yeah, and I helped him. I yelled at him until three in the morning. Oh, she was...
was great. I love you. Oh, I love you the most. No, you say you love me. Gag. <laughs> Barbara Jean, how's it going? You like me. <laughs> Barbara Jean, you think I'm a good person. <laughs> and I also said that you're very annoying. I didn't want you around my granddaughter. And yet, you like me. <laughs> See, that's the very thing that makes you so annoying. I'm annoying, but she likes me. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. I'm annoying, but she cares. <laughs> stop it. She says to stop it, but she likes me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, song over. <laughs> so what, you just came over here to gloat? No, I came to say thank you. Why? Well, it's just with me being the other woman and all, our friendship got off to a bad start. <laughs> But you're very special to me And it's just good news to find out that I'm special to you too Okay, wait, let's get this very clear I'm still way more special to you than you are to me <laughs> But I'm catching up <laughs> I'll be by later and we can chat some more Okie dokie, Smokey <laughs> Please tell me she didn't hear that She said okie dokie cause she loves I'm Lindsay Bartelson, and next we've got an all new Grounded for Life. Hey, I'm home! Why do I always think that's gonna be big news? <laughs> Jake, what'd I tell you about vegging in front of the TV? It's an educational show. Jake, you're nine. You're not going to buy real estate with no money down. Now, shut it off. Man, it's like you don't want me to get rich. What am I supposed to do now? Did you ask the neighbors about signing up for your school's 5K run? No one's going to want to run a race. Races are dumb. No, they're not. Your dad and I used to run 5Ks all the time. They're fun and exciting. Mom, running isn't fun. It's what you do to get away from girls. <laughs> Hey, Mom, how was your day? Oh, busier than a woodpecker in a lumber yard. <laughs> cool, what's for dinner? Cheyenne, I just walked in the door. And she asked you what's for dinner. <laughs> what's with the recap? <laughs> I already have a job. And I'm sick of my second one being your chef, cook, maid, and chauffeur. It would be nice if I had some time to do something nice for me. I'll take a bubble bath and a big old tub in Europe. So what am I supposed to say to people to get them to sign up for this dumb race? Just tell them how much fun running is. They won't believe me. Sure they will. You've got an honest face. Just smile when you say it. Okay. Mom? <laughs> will you sign up for my fun race? <laughs> Oh, you are so busted. Jake, Mom doesn't run anymore. She's right. I don't. I cook and I clean. And I fall asleep watching the 10 o'clock news. But tonight, I'm going to take a bubble bath. And in the morning, I'm going to start running again. That a girl. <laughs> We're never going to get dinner, are we? <laughs> Change it fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor
you doing? I'm helping out around here, and I'm making a cake. Mom, where do we keep the dextrose sucritose? <laughs> Honey, that's an instant cake mix. You're reading the ingredients. <laughs> Just add water. Oh. This is going to be easy. Cheyenne, I appreciate your help, but I don't know if it's a good idea with you baking. For one thing, I don't know if we have the insurance. <laughs> don't worry. I've got someone coming over to help. Hey there, culinary cutie. <laughs> you know, pretty soon when people ask what's cooking, you can say, I am. <laughs> is there anything you won't wear? <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. Here, are you silly? Why didn't you tell me you were coming over? We could have walked together. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> hey, sweetie, do you need something? No, I just came to see the cooking show. So what's with the outfit? Oh, I'm getting in shape for the school's 5K run. Hey, you know what? You gotta do it with me. You mean run through town all sweaty with my mom? Finally, I'll be popular. <laughs> okay, for our first lesson, we're gonna take a little trip to Italy. Mm -hmm. Will Cheyenne be making spaghetti? I wouldn't put it pasta. <laughs> you are not okay. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Hey, Mrs. H. I was checking out the entry form for the race, and this is the perfect year for you to run in it. So you're moving into a new age category, the 42 to 49 group. You're the youngest of the old people. <laughs> You may never get dinner again. No, see, none of the other people in your group can run a 5K in under 24 minutes. You can kick these geezer butts. Man, it's not about winning. That's the way Brock ruined it for me. He was so competitive. Really? What would he do? He wouldn't talk to the other runners. He'd elbow people on the turn. He'd even talk trash to me. He used to call me lead feet. <laughs> Cheyenne is doing really well. But just for the heck of it, do you have a fire extinguisher? <laughs> Stir the sauce. So what happened then, Cheyenne? Okay. Well, so I say to the saleswoman, yeah, those pants are low, but they're last year's low. And I want this year's low. Stir the sauce. <laughs> the saleswoman said that? Oh, yeah, and she gives me this, like, attitude. You know, that she's the saleswoman and she knows what this year's low is. Stir! <laughs> so what did you do? Oh, this is so great. And I say really nicely. You know my fake nice voice? Um, excuse me, is there any way that I could speak with a manager? It's burning! And she says to me, Stir this on, Cheyenne! <laughs> and to the manager... That's the pasta, the sauce! And so the manager comes Stir, out. stir, don't talk to stir! You know what, we're done, okay? You know, there's only oh. so much you can do to food talk. Just gives up, you know? <laughs> oh, well, that was so easy. Yeah. So much for Italiano. <laughs> I can't wait to see what we're going to cook tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Ciao, Barbara Jean. <laughs> Back from your run, huh? Yeah, it was great. No, it wasn't. It was pathetic. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I saw you from the porch. Yeah? This is you. <laughs> I don't run like that. Mrs. H, if you have any chance of winning this thing, you need me to take over your training immediately. Would you stop? I don't care about winning, I told you. Oh, come on. We'll hit the streets tomorrow at 6 a.m., come back here for stretching and core training. 6 a.m.? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me think about that. No. <laughs> Listen to me loud and clear. I am not competitive. I did it. I got some Neils to sign up for the race. Oh, great, Jake. Well, well, well. <laughs> it's just like the old days, isn't it? Lead feet. Make it 
5.30. I'm going to go run again. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, you're almost the finish line. Finish strong. How'd I do? What's my time? <laughs> yick. What do you mean, yick? Don't say yick. Okay. Blah. <laughs> Dang it, man. I tell you every morning I can't do 5K in 24 minutes. What are you going to believe me? Well, I guess I have to today because you ran it in 2350. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. You know, I bet I could have even done it faster if I hadn't tripped over that trash can. <laughs> Is there anything you won't wear? You know, I was stretching out in my driveway when I saw you run by, Reba. It's very impressive. You are definitely the one to beat. In the comedy division. <laughs> Here it comes, man. Don't start your trash talk with me, Brock. Yeah, don't bring that garbage gab around here. This is Mrs. H's house. I'm just making conversation. Well, you're not very good at it. I'm doing this for me, Brock. <clears throat> I just want to enjoy running like I used to before you ruined it with your competitiveness. My competitiveness? Uh -huh. Oh, wait a minute. You're the one who's up at the crack of dawn training with the college athlete. Training? Ha. You think we're... Van, he thinks we're training. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because we're both wearing sweats? Yeah. Well, maybe we're in the same dance company. Hmm? <laughs> you are every bit as competitive as I am, Reba. Afraid not. Oh, afraid so. Afraid not. Afraid so, Infinity. <laughs> you only started to pretend you weren't when you realized you couldn't beat me. <laughs> Pardon my French, but... <sighs> Horse feathers. <laughs> Admit it. When I entered this race, you saw it was your opportunity to finally beat me, but you forgot something. I always win. Well, pardon my French. Not this time. <laughs> And you know why I always win? Because you're a gigantic butt. <laughs> oh, wee wee. <laughs> no, because you don't have that conquering spirit that it takes to be a winner. Face it, Reba, you're just too nice. I'm fixing a nice you right upside the head. Now get out of here. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going. I want to try and get in a good 5K before work today. You know, yesterday I was kind of slow. Only ran it in 22 flat. Yeah. I forgot how much fun we used to have doing this. I didn't, because we didn't. Foulet tout malet peu le ton bon peu. Oh, this is so disgusting. Oh, this is so gross. <laughs> ew, 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 gross. No, mm -mm. nope. You know, I used to work at a church summer camp when I was in high school. Taught blind kids to cook. Blind kids! They just picked her right up. To is something burning? Is something burning? <laughs> it's the bread. Do you remember the bread? Do you remember I told you to take it out of the oven ten minutes ago? <laughs> Poor bread. Poor innocent bread. You never had a chance. <laughs> Bread. You know, I taught my niece to cook lasagna when she was six years old. That's a true story. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> I gotta go home. Barbara Jean, are you sure you're okay? Oh, that's the only way back down. <laughs> I'm just gonna help you. I'm just gonna help you. Oh, Reba. Oh, Reba. I swear I tried. I swear on everything that's precious and holy, I tried. Barbara Jean, you're preaching to the choir. I've been there. Oh. I love you, Reba. How about that? Let's start a band. <laughs> Definitely something to think about. Absolutely. Be careful on your walk home. Come on, Barbara Jean. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Look what I can do. Once when it was full. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she did. Okay, Mrs. H, it's 5 p.m., which means stretching on the patio. Let's go. Pass. Mrs. H, tomorrow's the race. We gotta stretch big time tonight. There's not gonna be any race. At least not for me, anyway. Oh, you're quitting? Who are you, huh? Quitty Quitterson from Quitsville, Quitland? <laughs> I can't beat him. Who, Quitty? Brock. He was right. I do want to beat him. I always did. He's also right about that other thing he said, about me not having that conquering spirit thing. Oh, let's face it, Van. I'm nice. <laughs> you know what they say about nice guys. You can lead them to water, but you can't make... No. <laughs> That's, that's horses. Appreciate your help, but I'm out. Hey, I totally get it. Good. You're a grown woman. It's completely your choice if you want to act like a big baby. Knock it off. I don't feel like a winner. Mrs. H, listen to me for a minute. Don't tell me what it feels like to be a winner. I've been an athlete my whole life. I know exactly what it feels like to score the winning touchdown or hit the jump shot at the buzzer. And let me tell you something. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Everybody chanting and cheering your name. Go, Van! Van! Van is the man! <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. H, your whole life is like that. You have conquered tons of stuff. Anything that life could throw at you. And you keep going. And you keep this family going. But you do it in so many little ways that maybe, maybe it doesn't feel like you're conquering anything. You know what you need? A crowd following you around. Every time you do the laundry, they do the wave. <laughs> Every time you make a pot roast, they chant, Mrs. H, Mrs. H, Mrs. H is the man! <laughs> oh, man, that's really sweet and a dang good idea. But it has nothing to do with the race! It's got everything to do with the race! You can beat Mr. H, and when you do, you're gonna know that feeling that I'm talking about. And the next time you don't feel like a winner, You'll know that you are. Well, what are you standing there for? We got some stretching to do. Uh, uh... <laughs> Great if you like watching somebody cheat. Oh, now, Kira, I don't think that was technically cheating. Elbowing somebody in the face on a turn? <laughs> yeah, I think it was Barbara Cheat. Yeah. I told you, it was an accident. Yeah, maybe the first time. Oh, my gosh. Mom beat Dad. Oh, it's not about winning, Cheyenne. If it were, yeah, I'll kick this butt. Ah! <laughs> you know what this calls for? Little hair of the dog. Kira, Jake, Cheyenne. Loser. <laughs> Louie Loser from Loserville, Louisiana. Hey, 
there, coach. Hey there, winner. Winnie Winterson from Winterson. Oh, shut up, man. <laughs> you may have lost, Dad, but you sure were funny to watch. Yeah, that's that's what I was going for, son. <laughs> Van? <laughs> l -l 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 Van? Les Luzas! Oh. <laughs> you know what's weird? Now I totally get why you tried so hard to win. It's a great feeling, this kicking butt. Suddenly you seem to be a little more competitive. Well, it's more fun to be competitive when you're winny winnersome. <laughs> But I'm the nice competitive kind, not your psycho kind. Oh, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I could see you were having fun out there. How could you see that with binoculars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. I always did enjoy running. Yeah, I know, until I kind of wrecked it for you. <laughs> Brock, of all the things you wrecked in my life, running is way down there. Well, I'm glad I could give you back that feeling. Well, thanks, but you didn't give it back. I took it. Okay. What's that mean? Okay. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Forget I said it. Are you saying that you weren't trying to win? No, no, I tried. I just... I didn't try the way I usually try. You know, the gigantic butt way. Cool. You gave it all you had and you lost. I want you to say that to my face. Well, I can't honestly do that. Okay, then you know what? We're going to race again, right now. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Right now. Down to the park and back, that's three miles. Yeah, which means I'd beat you by two. Shoot, you could take the car, I'd still beat you. Come on, big boy. Come on. <laughs> Put up or shut up. Come on. Are you serious? Yes. You want it? You got it. You are going down, Red. Go. To the park and back? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, guys. My special race day dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Just as soon as the meat stops boiling. Change plans. We'll race down to the pizza place, loser buys. Deal. And no elbowing in the face. Deal. Oh! <laughs> Is Cheyenne gonna get home? I'm dying to know how she did on the test. I need to wash these windows. <laughs> Mom, don't get your hopes up. Cheyenne's taking a college exam, not just guessing which hand the candy is in. <laughs> Besides, what's the big deal if she fails? Maybe she's not cut out to be a dentist. I'll tell you what the big deal is. No matter how old you kids are, I still want to protect you. Shoot, if I thought you could still breathe, I'd bubble wrap you. <laughs> hey, have you heard from Cheyenne? Do I look like I've heard from Cheyenne? If I had, I'd go, oh, or not, ooh. I have been sending Cheyenne good thoughts all day. Okay. For her and Sting. <laughs> I love Sting. Hey, Barbara Jean, guess which hand? Oh, I'm not gonna fall for that. You never have any candy. <laughs> Left. <laughs> Where is she? This can't be good. Reba, relax. I'm sure she did just fine. And so what if she didn't? Heck, I flunked my first three pre-med exams and barely squeaked by on my fourth. You must be so proud. <laughs> now, Brock Cheyenne's taking a big risk here. She has dream of being a dentist. I remember how crushed I was when I wasn't perky enough for the price is right. <laughs> Someday, Bob Barker. <laughs> This is so nerve-wracking. I mean, I let my little birdie leave the nest, and now she's out there flying around on a world full of plate glass windows. And here she comes. <laughs> hey, little birdie, how'd it go? Oh, honey. Oh, you know what? I squeaked by on my fourth try, and I'm sure you will, too. Gotcha! What? I got a B plus! A B plus! That is a B! With a plus after it! <laughs> For real? For real! All right! All right! Oh, I'm not... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never taken a test where I knew so many of the answers. I've got to think it was a study. We have to celebrate. I am taking everybody out to dinner. I'm even springing for lobster. <gasps> 
but only for Cheyenne. Right. <laughs> Honey, I am so proud of you. You picked a really tough career, and so far you're doing great. Thank you, but you deserve a lot of the credit, Mom. Even though I said at first you shouldn't do it? Yeah, because it was like once you did believe in me, I knew I could do it. I'm pretty sure I believed in you right from the beginning. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not talking about you. I believed in you. I believe you can do anything you set your mind to. You and Sting. You know, I have to say, it seems like you two are really growing up and making some solid decisions. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? I'm quitting school. <laughs> I want you to divorce him. Hey! My roots are planted in the past Though my life is changing fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter school? Yeah. Go get me a switch. <laughs> Mrs. H, I'm not quitting just to do nothing. I got to try out with the arena football. Oh my gosh. I'm going to be a dentist uh -huh. and you're going to be a pro football player. We're going to be a power couple, honey. <laughs> Man, that is so awesome. Excuse me, honey. <laughs> this could be your stepping stone to the NFL. And I want you to remember, I've always believed in you and your ability to get me seats on the 50-yard line. <laughs> playing college football. Yeah, I know, I know, but the scout says I'm practically a lock. And get this, I could make 60 Gs a year. $60,000? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be rich. Hey, 50 yard line seats and, and a parking pass. <laughs> 60,000 bones a year to do what you love? Okay, this just in, Vans made it. Yeah! I'm sorry, I just don't think it's a good idea. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> so, are you saying I shouldn't do it? No, I just think it's a bad idea, but you do what you think's best. So who wants pie? <laughs> man, that is not fair. She can't say it's a bad idea and then offer me pie. <laughs> I love pie! <laughs> hey, honey, I made some coffee. You want some? I don't know. It's free. I'll take some. It's about all we can afford. Now that we're not rich. <laughs> I told Van it was his decision. That's a big step for me. Mom, he's not going to try out because he knows you think it's a bad idea. Well, that's another thing you can thank me for one day. And what a busy day that's gonna be. Okay, I'm off to school. Another day, another zero dollars. I hate to sound preachy, but stay in school. Don't do drugs. Well, all I'm saying is colleges are full of people who thought college was gonna get them somewhere. And where are they? In college. Think about it. This isn't like all of our other decisions. Van really thought this one out. Oh, I'm sure he's got 60,000 reasons. He just cares about the blink blink. It's bling bling, Mom. <laughs> blink blink is what I do when Dad tells another one of his golf stories. <laughs> Whatever. I just don't think Van realizes what he's given up. Honestly, Mom, Van's not that into school. You know, he's only there to play football. Okay, what if he gets hurt? He's not going to have an education to fall back on. Mom, even if Van plays for just one year, it would give us enough money that he could go back to school anytime he wanted to. And it would pay for my dental school, and we could start a college fund for Elizabeth. Okay, I'm going to need a little time to find the flaws in this argument, so <laughs> until then, let's just slide them aside and pretend they don't count. Anything else? Mom, I think Van and I are finally putting things together. You know, and if you look past the whole teen pregnancy thing, we've made a lot of really good choices. Okay, fine. But if I find out that Kira taught you how to argue with me, you're all in trouble. 
<laughs> Babe, would you come in here, please? Did you call me? Because I was thinking about getting a haircut. You might want to kill that dream. <laughs> Listen, I realize that I might have been a little quick to judge. So if you really want to try out for the arena football, you have my blessings. What's your game, lady? <laughs> no game. Cheyenne just convinced me that there's another way of looking at this. And that maybe I was looking at it in a negative way. But it's just that I was trying to protect you guys. So you still think it's a bad idea? Who knows? Maybe it's a great start for you in a great career. I mean, it could go from arena football to the NFL, and you could take the Cowboys to the Super Bowl. I mean, this tryout could set you up for the rest of your life. You really think I could do it? I really do. Well, thanks, Mrs. H. You have no idea what this means to me. I'm gonna go get started on the rest of my life. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> home. And I'll be at Tommy's. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you finish your homework? Nope. And I'm never doing homework again. <laughs> Kara said I can drop out of school like Van. Kara? <laughs> well, he's going to eventually. I mean, you've talked to the boy. Don't you think he's peaked? <laughs> Jake, go upstairs. Kira will help you with your homework. Oh, oh man. <laughs> well, we'll start with subtraction. What is my life minus two hours? <laughs> you know, I taught her how to read, too. You know what I taught you? Shut up, Kara. <laughs> Have you heard from Van? No, but I know he's going to make the team. Last night, we had one of our good luck fights. For a couple of minutes, I couldn't even stand him. <laughs> You're an odd young couple. <sighs> Mom, he has got to make the team. I've already imagined how awesome our lives will be. I can't go back to how it was before. You mean this morning? Yeah. Hey, has, uh... He's not back yet. Oh, good. We wanted to be here for the good news. Now, remember, everybody, this is a big moment in Van's life. Of course, that doesn't mean we can't horn in on it. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh, hi. Honey, how did it go? Well, I can tell you how it went, or you can read about it in Van Stinks magazine. <laughs> well, at least you got your own magazine. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're doing the same thing that Cheyenne did to us. Come on. Come on. Say it. Gotcha. Oh. I made it. Come on. You dog. Yeah. Go on and yell at Van. Yell. Gotcha. <laughs> Honey. Van. Gotcha. I'm, I'm going to be upstairs taking a long look in the mirror at myself. <laughs> won't quit. I know he's messing with us. <laughs> no, he's not. Who wants pie? <laughs> hey, honey. How's Van? Any better? No. He just keeps staring in the mirror at himself. <laughs> you know, I don't get it. Trust me, Van is good enough to make that team. He's fantastic under pressure. Did he say what happened? He just said he keeps on thinking about what Mom said, you know, how this was his big chance. Oh, Reba. You sent Van off thinking? Thinking is highly overrated. Yeah, well, now it all makes sense. No, an athlete can't be thinking. He's got to go on instinct. It's like golf, you know. The other day, I was on this par five, okay? Second shot, 240 yards over water to the green. And I kept thinking that my five wood wasn't gonna be enough. And sure enough, I hit it right in the water. Double bogey. What's your point, bro? No point, Reba. Can I just get a bad day off my chest? Awful. I didn't mean to put pressure on Van. I was trying to be supportive. I mean, it worked when I did it with Cheyenne's test. You know what? Now that I think about it, I did feel a little more nervous. Who knows? You might have cost me an A. <laughs> Why don't we 
just give Van another tryout? We can tell the coach he just cracked under pressure. Sure. Coaches love that in a player right after her slow and throws like a girl. <laughs> Is there any reason someone could get another tryout? I don't know, maybe. I guess if they were sick or something. Then he's sick. Ooh, broken leg. <laughs> Part of Jim, the coach saw him. If he'd broken his leg, he'd be wearing a cast. Right. No cast. Oh, I got it. Nope. Then he'd be in a wheelchair. <laughs> I'll think of something on my way over there. Hey, but why are you going? Shouldn't Van go? Van go. Van go! Tell the coach he cut his ear off. <laughs> Come in. Hi there, I'm Reba Hart. Well, if you're here for the cheerleader tryouts, you're hired. <laughs> I've never been a cheerleader <laughs> Anyway, I'm looking for the coach who held the football tryouts this afternoon That would be me Oh Coach Class Nice to meet you So I want to talk to you about my son-in-law who tried out today but didn't make it Oh, please, don't be one of those One of those what? One of those mothers or fathers or whoever Who call me when somebody doesn't make the team Nobody believes their all-star just isn't good enough. Oh, that must be terrible. Mm -hmm. But in my case, it's true. <laughs> Why is that? Because your family's perfect and nobody could possibly fail? Bobby was nervous. Bobby was sick. Well, you know what? Sometimes Bobby just stinks. <laughs> well, he doesn't stink. He probably plays better than anybody else on your stinking team. Sure he does. What would a football coach know about a good player? You know what they say. If you want to know if a guy can play, ask his mother-in-law. You know what? I'm glad Van didn't make the team because that would mean I'd have to see an arrogant, judgmental coach low class like you again. Van? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're Van Montgomery's mother-in-law? Yeah. He didn't show up for his tryout. He, he what? I figured he was sick or something until you came down here and started screaming at me. Gotcha! <laughs> oh, you thought I was all rude and crazy for real? Nah! <laughs> I was just kidding around. Uh, no, no, I, I just came down here to reschedule the tryout because of, uh, of what you said, that he was sick and all. What happened to him? Oh, uh, well, uh, the doctor... Um, Thought he might have had a broken leg or, or cut off his ear, but he's played through worse. Okay. Look, I'd be happy to give him another tryout. We've heard good things about him. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Hey! Are you sure you're not a cheerleader? <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> What is it, hon? Because for the tenth time, if something's bothering you, I'd be glad to talk. No, no. I'm okay. I think I'm getting over it. All right. Oh. Hey, Van, Cheyenne. Hey, Mrs. H. Where were you? Oh, I was down visiting with Coach Class. I gotta go. <laughs> Get back here. What's going on? Van didn't go to the tryout. Van, is that true? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah. You mean you, you lied to us and you made us feel terrible for you and you didn't even go? I know, I know. If I were a guy like me, I'd hate myself. And I am. So I do. <laughs> so why didn't you go to the tryout? Trust me, that coach has great taste. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take the pressure. If you didn't make it? Well, if I did, you said this would set us up for life. Life! Man, I was being encouraging. You were being terrifying. <laughs> Suddenly it hit me. If I made the team, I'd have a career. Do you know what that would make me? An adult. <laughs> Van, were you in the room for the part where your wife had a baby? Listen, I, I know we're parents, but still, we didn't have to grow up so fast. You were always more parent-y. Parent-t. 
fish? Parentilius. <laughs> if I have a career, then we have to go out on our own. And, and, and if I blow it, then my entire family suffers. Mrs. H, I don't think I'm ready to be the man of the house. I like it when you're the man of the house. <laughs> So you want me to cook and clean and take care of you for the rest of your life? And I'd be very grateful. Man, you're using me as your crutch. Now, this has got to stop. Well, what do you mean? You can't take away a man's crutch. You have to make your own decisions without my opinion. And if you fail, you fail. You deal with it. Now, I got you another tryout. And whether you use it or not, that's up to you. Wait, wait, wait. You asked the coach to give me another... Oh, man, now he's going to think I'm some mama's boy in law. No comment. Fly away, little birdies. Good luck, world. <sighs> so I guess you're mad at me, too. What, that you're, you're scared of growing up? Uh, I know the feeling. Van, you're not alone out there, okay? Whatever happens, happens to us. You know, we're a team. And I got news for you. You do not have to be the man of the house. We both will be. We succeed together and we fail together. You mean it? Yeah. So do we think I should try out for the team? Yeah, we do. Okay. Mm. And hey, if I don't make the team, it doesn't matter because you're still going to become a dentist. <laughs> oh, what? Trying to put all the pressure on me? No. <laughs> just make the team. Okay. <laughs> and just think of it this way. If everything else goes wrong, we can always live with mom for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Ooh. Shane, if you're nervous about Van's tryout, I'd be more than happy to talk. No, no, it's okay, I'm fine. Not really nervous, nervous anyway, you know? I'm just more like, hmm, I wonder if he made it nervous. <laughs> oh. Hey. Well? Yeah, well? I made it! You got a minute? Oh, honey, not this morning. I am running so late for work. Well, I kind of wanted your advice about boys. I'll call in sick. <laughs> Boy advice? I'm your older sister. That's my birthright. No offense, but I kind of decided not to ask you for advice when your water broke during high school graduation. <laughs> You're seriously asking mom for advice about boys? Barbara Jean would be better than mom. I would be better than Barbara Jean. It goes me, Barbara Jean, Dad, Van, Jake... Then, Mom. I'm glad we don't have a dog. Barbara Jean is nuts, and Dad, well, as he puts it, he was a teenage boy once, too. And apparently a creepy one. And I can't talk to my friends because then everybody in school would know which guy I like. Wait a minute, are you saying there was nobody left so you came to me? Fine, I'll take it. We know that a bunch of kids from band have been hanging out after practice, right? I do now. Anyways, there's this guy, Scott, who plays trombone, and he's funny, and he has blue eyes, and he's really cute. And does he have an older brother? <laughs> Sorry. Some people listen, and some people make jokes. Anyways, I like him, and I think he likes me, too. But when I drop hints about going to the movies or something, he just cleans his spit valve. How can I tell if he likes me, too? I can think of, like, ten ways. How many can you come up with, Mom? I have one. You can ask him out to the movies. Ask him out? That is the worst advice I've ever heard. A girl can't wait around forever for a guy to clean his spit valve. <sighs> if you want to know if he likes you, just ask him out. What if he says no? Well, then say thank you very much and move on to the woodwinds. <laughs> 
Well, I guess it's better than not knowing. Go. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Did you hear that? Karen and I talked about dating. I'm gonna put that in her baby book. <laughs> Mom, work? Right, I'll do that later. <laughs> Planted in the past Though my life is changing fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor There she is. Get her, Brock. Did you tell Kira to ask a boy out on a date? I know. Can you believe Kira asked Mom for advice about boys? That's right. When it comes to giving Kira advice about boys, it goes me, Jake, Van, and then Cheyenne. But what about me? Don't I make the list? Oh, you're at the top of another list. <laughs> Well, the boy said yes, so thanks to you, she has a date on Friday. Yes! Kira took my advice and it worked! That goes in the book. Kira has a date because of Mom? Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. What's next? Jake's gonna give good fashion advice? Well, he did pick out my shirt today. I need to lie down. Well, since you two are already upset, Jake called from Vegas. He married a showgirl. <laughs> Are you finished teasing? Yes. Wait. Yes. This is a real problem, Reba. Kira's not allowed to date until she's 18. 18? She's not allowed to date through high school? It's a good rule. And it worked wonderfully until you undermined us. Hey, don't blame me. Kira didn't tell me about it. Well, she's not entirely at fault. We haven't told her yet. Oh. So you guys have a bunch of secret rules. Did you write them down in invisible ink? She's 14. It hadn't come up yet. And I was ready to ban dating altogether after what happened to Cheyenne. Something happened to Cheyenne? <laughs> hey. I think Kira's mature enough to handle herself. It doesn't matter how mature Kira is. It's the guy that's the problem. Oh, the guy. I'm the problem. <laughs> and the rest of the villagers grab your torches and run me out of town. I'm not talking about you, Van. I'm talking about teenage boys who have only one thing on their mind. Well, I got news for you, Mr. H. I'm a teenage boy, and you know what I got on my mind? Nothing. Well, I think you guys are overreacting. There are two 14-year-olds going to a movie. We'll meet the boy here. I'll drop him off and pick him up. It'll be fine. It's not fine. You should have checked with us before you told Kira she could go out. I should have checked with you. I really believe that as parents, we three should present a united front. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea, Barb Jean, except you're not Kira's parent. <gasps> Me? <laughs> well, for the past three months, I've been parent enough to make her dinner and do her laundry. Wow, three whole months. That is hard. I mean, I just gave birth to her. You made her a sandwich. <laughs> Raising Kira is my job. <clears throat> yeah, and his too. So, like always, Reba's right, and we're wrong. Good. Remember that, and we won't have these arguments. I hope you know what you're doing, Reba. Come on, Barbara G. Fine. And maybe next time I'll marry somebody whose ex-wife appreciates me. Hey, honey, how is practice? Violent. Those pro guys are tough and mean. And they do not like pretty boys. No, it's probably just because you're new. No, no, no. I'm the best looking guy on the team. Hey, Jake, how 
How is school? That depends. Is mom home? No. <sighs> then school is great. Would you sign her name on this? <laughs> you throw a pencil at a girl in school? Why do boys act like that? Whoa, whoa. Why do boys act like that? Is that what you think? Is that what you want our daughter to think? That boys are automatically the bad guy? He's not automatically the bad guy, Van. It's just... I mean, come on, they just are. I bet Jake had a good reason. Tell her, Jake. I was mad. That's not good enough. Dig deeper. Jill Campbell's writing notes about how she loves me and passing them to her friends. She wouldn't stop. There you go. The girl started it. I bet she didn't even get into trouble, did she? Girls don't get in trouble, Van. Girls don't get in trouble, Cheyenne. It's always the guy. Jake here is a victim. A victim of Jill Campbell's love and of a sexist society. I got you, buddy. I got you. Well, I never thought of it like that. Well, me neither, but now that I have, I'm gonna do something about it. Like what? You're gonna write a musical about men's issues? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. I'm gonna go talk to Jake's teacher. I make up one song in the shower and you won't let me live it down. <laughs> Mind if I get dressed for my date over here? Things are a little tense at the convent. <laughs> I was hoping he would. Hey, I've been working on this all day, and I've come up with five sure-fired, interesting topics for you guys to talk about. I'll just wait outside. No! <laughs> Come here. Come on upstairs. I'll try not to embarrass you. Is he here yet? No. Good, because I don't like him. <laughs> but I'm gonna like him even less when he gets here, so I need to know how to pace myself. Relax, this is Kira's first day. We should be excited for her. Well, I'm excited. Of course, that's because I'm not Kira's parent, so I don't care what happens to her. Let <laughs> the good times roll, I say. I don't even know why we're meeting this kid. I know exactly what he's gonna say. Hello, sir, nice to meet you, sir. Any 14-year-old punk that calls me sir is up to no good. Believe me, I know what sir means. It's a word kids use to trick old people. Brock, I'm sure when you meet the boy, you'll find that he's just a sweet, scared little kid. Not all creepy like you were. Kara, your date's here. <laughs> How do I look? Just oh. Hey, I'm Scott. Is it, is it cool that I parked my car on the driveway? You're Scott? With a car that you drive? 14-year-olds don't drive. I know, I'm, I'm 17. I, 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 and there's no need to worry. I've had my license for over a year and I've never gotten a ticket. Your daughter is safe with me, sir. <laughs> Oops. like you met my parents. So, are we ready to go? No! And, uh, no need to rush off. I mean, the night is young. Not as young as you thought. <laughs> Why don't you two have a seat? Your father and I will get you a snack in the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Scott. Right here. Hi. I'm not Kira's parent. You kids want a beer? Barbara G. I'm coming. Jake, Jake, go in the living room and embarrass your sister. Five bucks if you can chase the grown man away. Seventeen. He's seventeen years old. Oh, man. At 17, I was really bad. Kira threatened me. That just means you're doing your job. Now get back in there. What are we gonna do? I don't want Kira dating a 17-year-old boy, but if we forbid her from dating, she's just gonna sneak around. Well, this is what happens when we do things your way. I don't think this is a good time for finger-pointing, Brock. Not when Tom Jones is sitting in our living room. <laughs> 
if you asked me. Well, I didn't. All right. <laughs> you guys can stop pretending to get snacks. Scott and I will grab something once we're in Mexico. Oh, very funny, Kira. Why didn't you tell us how old he is? I'm 14, he's 17. What's the big deal? Dad's 45 and you're 42. You're 45? <laughs> The date is off. But Mom said I could go. Yeah, well, now I'm saying you can't. Kira, we can't allow you to go out with a 17-year-old all by yourself. You and Scott can still see each other in groups. Oh, well, this is great. All my friends are busy, and he's already here. Where am I going to find a group? <laughs> you have to see this movie. It's full of TV actors. <laughs> This is the movie they wanted to see. They're the ones on the date. Well, we could have voted. There's more of us. Shh. I can't see where they are. How'd you lose them already? We didn't lose them. Besides, it's not like we're going to sit right beside them. I know. In between. <laughs> no, they deserve some privacy. Where in the heck are they? <gasps> there they are in the front row. Come on, we sit right here keep an eye on them. Excuse me. <clears throat> I hate this. Whose bright idea was it to have daughters? Probably Rebus. She calls all the shots. I do no talking in movie theaters. From now on, whenever you're around me, pretend we're in a movie theater. <laughs> Did you see that? He's doing the stretch and reach. He's going to put his arm around her. Well, it's just an arm. Just an arm? Do you even know how babies are born? <laughs> Would you please just stay out of this? Head on shoulder? We have a head on shoulder situation. Oh, that was fast. See what happens when you ignore the arm? Nothing happens. Scott seems like a nice enough kid. I mean, he didn't have any problem with us tagging along. Besides, they both know we're here, and I don't think they're going to be... Oh, Lord, did he just swallow her face? <laughs> okay, My daughter's getting kissed right in front of me. Does anyone else smell burnt toast? I think I'm having a stroke. I don't care whose daughter she is. Date over. Barbara Jean, would you stop parenting my child? If anyone says no kissing, it's gonna be me. I say no kissing! <laughs> You're not Kira. Oh my god. Non-sexist seeker of justice. How did it go with Jake's teacher? What? Oh, good. Good? Like she agreed the girl was just as much to blame as Jake was? Yeah, pretty much. Oh. She moved her desk to the other side of the room and told her to stay away from Jake at recess. I liked her, okay? You blew it! Well, I'm sorry! <laughs> Jenny, I'm sorry. But you stuck up for what you believed in and you were right. Yeah, kind of. What does that mean? Huh? Maybe Jake wasn't the bad guy, but I think I was the bad guy with you. I mean, your dad was right. I did have that thing on my mind. I mean, you were so innocent and unsuspecting. A little papaya ready to be plucked. <laughs> so I plucked. <laughs> and now when they talk about the thing that happened to Cheyenne, I'm the thing. Sam, you are not the thing. Yeah. And to be honest, I wasn't that innocent. Could you elaborate on that, please? I did tons of stuff to make you notice me. Like walking past your locker in my drill team uniform. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or pretending that I needed a ride home from school because my mom forgot to pick me up. I mean, come on, Van. What kind of mom forgets to pick her daughter up every day for a month? <laughs> I just assumed she drank. <laughs> so girls really do that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Is that why Tammy Terenzi did the same thing? No, she's just a slut. Oh. 
Thanks for not running away in fear after meeting my psycho parents. It's it's fine. Don't worry about it. What do you mean mine? My dad makes some pickles. <laughs> Five minutes means five minutes. You get four more minutes. So, um, did you get to school? Yeah. Why didn't you just say so? I did want you to go. I just didn't want that other couple to have any fun. <laughs> well, I was against it. But once again, we did it your mom's way. Well, my way didn't include Barbara Jean putting her two cents in all night long. Well, if you had listened to my two cents, Kira wouldn't have gone on a date. Kira going on a date wasn't the problem. You're the problem. Oh, you know what? I Will you know. stop? This is the problem. The three of you fighting over everything I do. I can live with rules, but you three have to agree on what they are. Otherwise, I'm the one who suffers. You ruined my first date. Ruined or made memorable? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. Wasn't fair to you. From now on, your father and I will discuss all the rules so there'll be no confusion. And Barbara Jean. You don't want this to work, do you? You're doing it again. Okay, fine. Barbara Jean can participate. But you two only get one vote. Why do we only get one? One brain, one vote. That's the law. <laughs> okay. So I guess the three of us are going to have to figure out some system for making rules. Well, I think since she lives with us, Brock and I should make the rules and then run them by you. Or... I can put the rules in a car and run them over you. Uh. <laughs> well, I think the best system would be if I didn't have any rules and I could prove how responsible I am. All in favor? <laughs> Sorry, I was pulling for you. <laughs> okay, I have a few rules that I would like to discuss. Barbara Jean, you can vote on the rules. You can't make them. Well, that's not fair. I don't right, care what fair. Look, you were right. I should have come to you. It was in our house. Me? Mom. You live in our house. Nobody is listening. Jake! Good news, buddy. I fixed everything with Jill Campbell. I told her the only reason you threw a pencil at her was because you liked her. And guess what? She's waiting for you outside on the porch. <laughs> Talk to Jill Campbell? Now, don't expect this every time, okay? The next babe, you get on your own. Right? I don't like Jill Campbell anymore. I already threw something at Linda Osborne. Jake, you have a date. No, Van. You have a date. I was wrong. Jake doesn't live here anymore. Oh, you look nice. Yeah. I'm going to go get Van. I've never picked up a guy at the airport before. It's going to be so romantic. Yeah, it's like Paris with nachos. I am taking Van to dinner to celebrate his first away game. Oh. You know, this is the first time he's ever come back from being away. Hey, Cheyenne, can I go with you to pick up Van? Oh, Jakey, I don't think you'd want to. Why not? Well, when Van gets off the plane... He's going to see me, and I'm going to be standing there looking awesome, and he's going to drop his bags, and I'm going to leap into his arms, and we're going to hug, and we're going to kiss. And... All right! <laughs> Gross, you ruined it! You really did. Hey, hey, I'm home! I was going to come get you! Well, I got an earlier flight, and I wanted to surprise you. Surprise! <laughs> you... 
next time you surprise me, tell me, okay? <laughs> At least we can still go to dinner. Oh, shoot. I already got something on the way home with my buddy who drove me. Well, that's great, Van. You ruined every romantic plan I had. Well, Mrs. Montgomery, uh -huh. I have some plans of my oh, own. Really? Oh, go out. Go out. Go out. Go out. Go out to dinner before you make me lose my appetite. But I really am full, and I'm not just saying that like I do when you make dinner. Well, you can just sit there and watch me eat and talk to me. You better be entertaining. Have fun. Hello. Hi. Is Van here? Oh, he just left. I'm sorry. Oh, well, he left this in my car. Could you give it to him, please? Thank you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait just a second. Uh, are you the buddy that Van had dinner with? Yeah. And you brought him home? Yeah. I work for the team. I'm Kate. And you are? Worried. <laughs> A planet in the past Though my life is changing fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor Tell me a little bit more about Van's jacket. He left it in my car. Oh, so you and I have a lot in common because he left his daughter in my house. <laughs> She's upstairs. She's a baby. Hey, Mom. Hey. Hi, I'm Kira. I'm Kate. I'm a friend of Van's. A friend of Van's? <laughs> what, Van can't have friends? What's so weird and suspicious about that? <laughs> We met on the team. I'm in publicity and we had dinner because we're thinking about doing a profile of Van. Oh, so you had dinner with Van and Cheyenne. I only asked because, as a couple, they fascinate me. <laughs> nope. Just Van. Just Van. That naughty boy. <laughs> well, I better get going. Okay, Thanks for the tea. Very, very good. All right. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. 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 I gotta go. Kira. Van had a business dinner with a business associate. Yeah, a hot one. <laughs> Man, as soon as I move out, you people decide to get interesting. Maybe I could take the door off and it would save you some time. <laughs> Do you need something? Where's Van? Out to Sinner. <laughs> Kira said Van went out with some really cute girl who returned some of his clothing. You never returned the clothing. <laughs> I mean, what did Cheyenne say? <laughs> well, she doesn't know. Well... He lied to my daughter? Well... <laughs> He didn't exactly lie. He said he had dinner with a buddy. Yeah, we heard. A hot one. I missed you more. No, I missed you more. I will be upstairs. <laughs> Brushing my teeth. So you guys had a good time, huh? Yeah, it was great. Except I bashed my face in the salad bar sneeze guard. My own fault. I sneezed. Oh, it must be nice to enjoy a meal with your wife after being on the road. <laughs> ah, the road. <laughs> Lonely, open road. Yeah, it must get awfully boring eating with your buddies all the time, huh? <laughs> Does it? <laughs> well, then let's talk about the weather. Is it chilly outside? <laughs> chilly enough, you might need your jacket. Oh, hey, my jacket. I thought I left it in. in. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. Oh, that's all you can say? Oh. Here's one for you. Aha! <laughs> I told Cheyenne I left it on the plane. She's right upstairs. Would you please be quiet? Buddy, if I were you, I'd be more worried about where Cheyenne's father is. <laughs> Me! I'm right here! Okay, Van, what's going on? So I got a ride home with this girl, Kate. What is the big deal? Well, the big deal is you made Kate sound like a Brian or a Tommy. Or, or a Fred. Or a Pierre. Or a... or Alejandro. <laughs> I think you owe us an explanation, bud. Okay, we were talking business, okay? This profile could really help my career. And that's it? That's it! I mean, come on, guys, you know me. Do you really think I'd do something like that? No. Sorry, Van. Okay, if it was all so innocent, why didn't you just tell Cheyenne that Kate brought you home? <laughs> because Cheyenne is really, really jealous of other women. In high school, I did this report on Margaret Thatcher, and she was like, why don't you have a baby with her? Well, she's way more mature now, and I think you should have told Cheyenne. Was well, that how you all feel? Yes. Yes. No. Well, all right, then. The no's have it. Thanks, Mr. H. Agree with him, Brock. He lied to Cheyenne. Yeah, to save himself a huge hassle. Oh, so you're okay with someone lying to their wife? Yeah. Are you comfy with that, Brock? <laughs> Look, I've never been comfortable with lying, but but sometimes women overreact, and telling them stuff only makes it worse. <laughs> except for you, honey. <laughs> lying in a marriage always leads to trouble. She never has to find out. <laughs> But because we know about it, we're involved. And there's no way I can look my daughter in the eye and lie to her. Just put it out of your mind. Oh, is that what you do, Brock? No, no, no. <laughs> You're both overreacting. It's over. It was a jacket in a car. I don't see how it's ever going to come up. It's a lie. It'll find a way. Yeah, well, it's still their life, so butt out. But out. But out. Fine. <laughs> China. <laughs> So Van was just having a business dinner and didn't want to upset Cheyenne. That's all that happened. How did something so interesting suddenly become so boring? <laughs> hey, look, Van thought he lost his jacket. Interesting again. <laughs> Who found it? Van's what? Huh? <laughs> Van's jacket. What? <laughs> Mom? Hey! That's Van's jacket! It came overnight express from the airline. They found it on the plane and sent it over. I signed for it and tipped the guy five bucks. So whenever you can get that back to me, Cheyenne. Oh, sure, thanks. I'll go get my purse. Wait a second. That's a lie. And you came up with that way too quick, little missy. Okay, what is going on? <laughs> oh, this is silly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you're gonna laugh your butt off. <laughs> oh, you know, this didn't come overnight express. Oh. Yeah, uh, Van's buddy who dropped him off, mm -hmm. uh, dropped this by because, um, Van left it in her car. Coffee? Her car? As in she? As in a woman? Well, I never thought about it that way, but, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. This woman, was she young and pretty? Or was she old and ugly? Hey, some older women can be pretty too, you know. Just answer me, Mom. Well, she was pretty young. I mean, uh, not pretty young. I mean, she was young and pretty. Well, what, what did she say? How does he know her? Well, she works for the team, but it's strictly professional. Oh, my gosh. Does she sleep in the same hotel as him? Nothing good happens in hotels, Mom. Oh, Cheyenne. I, I think we're missing the point here. What? The good news what? is Van got his jacket back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is good news. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> kind of gives it that rugged outdoorsy look, don't you think? Oh, hey, Mrs. H. Where should I am? I got her some flowers. Oh, that's a good idea. You might want to throw in a diamond ring, a convertible, and a beach house. <laughs> Well, I kind of blew all my cash on the flowers, so... Oh, wait! What for? I don't know. Uh, Mrs. H, my flight leaves tonight, and uh, don't make me say I want to spend some alone time with your daughter. <laughs> we know that both makes us feel a little uncomfortable. Yes, it does. Look, Ben, Cheyenne knows that Kate brought you home. What? I can't believe you told her, Big Mouth! Ma'am? I had to tell her. I can't lie to her. Well, what did she say? Oh, nothing much. Well, I don't hear slamming. Are my clothes all over the front lawn? I don't know. Hmm? Maybe she's taking it okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. I want your cheating clothes out of this house. What? Why? Because... They're your work clothes. You wear them when you play on your team, the Gigolos. Oh. Oh, all right, listen up. Hold on. Neutral corners. Let's talk about this. Oh, if he wants to talk about it, why doesn't he just talk to... What's her name? Kate. This is H. Kate, why don't you just talk to your buddy Kate over dinner with your jacket off? Okay, all right, all right. Look, look, Cheyenne. I'm sure Van is sorry that he lied. No, I'm not. Okay, well, talking didn't work. Let's try some quiet time. Come on. You know what? I, I was trying to save myself from this. And if I did anything wrong, you made me do it. Oh, so it's my fault? Well, I know it's not mine. I didn't do anything. And why am I supposed to believe that? Why aren't you, huh? I mean, I don't want to be with anybody else. And I'm sick and tired of feeling like I have to lie all the time. You know what? I'm glad your mom ratted me out like a mob stoolie. <laughs> I'm relieved. Well, so am I, because I finally know that my husband's a big, fat, lying fibber. I can't talk to you anymore. I can't talk to you anymore, so why don't you just get out? Fine, I'm gone. Fine! But only because I enjoy taking long walks. Well, enjoy! Well, I will! <laughs> Seriously, I gotta move back here. <laughs> I still think she should give me the benefit of the doubt. I mean, isn't it innocent until proven guilty? What she's doing is un-American. Man, it's just because she loves you so much. You know, when Reba and I were first dating, she was incredibly jealous. Once, I didn't call her for a whole week. Okay, she never said anything about it, but you could tell it really bugged her. Well, she never said anything. No, no, you could tell. Man, are you sure you don't want to go and apologize? I mean, it's only a couple hours till your plane goes and you're going to be gone for three whole days. No way, Mr. H. I mean, I need to make a stand now or else I'm going to be backing down my entire marriage. I mean, you told me that's how you handled both of your difficult wives. <laughs> that's guy talk, man. You don't do guy talk in a guy's living room. Yeah. There's the liar. <laughs> And the man comfortable with the liar. Okay, that stopped being funny half an hour ago. So what's for dinner, sweetie? Oh, your favorite. New York steak with baked potatoes and homemade apple pie for dessert. Oh, man, that sounds great. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> We're having franks and beans. Yeah. See, I don't want to tell you the truth because you might overreact and get hysterical. Franks and beans? Oh, we're having franks and beans? Hey, Van. I brought your clothes. Thanks, Mrs. H, but I'm already wearing clothes. Cheyenne's really upset. <laughs> She's been locked in your room ever since you left, watching the wedding video over and over and over. Now, doesn't that sound like somebody who's hurting? The wedding videos? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> I 
I'm worried, Brock. If Van leaves with things unresolved, this thing could get out of control. Well, if they won't get together, we'll get them together. Do whatever it takes to get Cheyenne to the airport. You really think it'll work? Well, it has to. We don't want them to have to go through the pain of someone not calling someone for a week, and I think you know what I'm talking about. What? You remember. Remember what? Come on, Reba. Oh, Brock, we don't have time for this. Let's go to the airport. Man, she's still hurting. Thanks for the ride and everything, Mr. H, but don't you think I should be getting on the plane now? No. No, not yet. Oh, look who's here. Oh, so that's why you kept me from getting on the plane, Benedict Judas. Mom, we knew they were here. That's why we came. I came, I saw. Goodbye. Cheyenne, you have a life and a baby with that man, and I paid $8 for parking. Now start talking. <laughs> My mom made me come down here to say goodbye. And I already said it. So bye. There's an extra one for the next time you go away. Wow. That apology is so bad, I'm starting to think it wasn't one. I should not apologize to you. You should apologize to me. For what? I didn't do anything. Then you lied. About nothing. Uh, shh, shh, shh. I brought you down here to make up, not to fight. Now get over there and make up. Yeah, and make it fast. They're almost finished boarding. I don't know how I can make up with someone who doesn't even trust me, and there is no reason for you not to trust me. I didn't do anything wrong. But you could. No, I couldn't. Yes, you could. Anyone could. Cheyenne, why don't you believe me? Because my dad did. Reba, you like this shirt? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Look, Van, I just... I mean, if it can happen to my parents, it can happen to anyone. Not to us. I will never be like your dad. <laughs> Again, sorry. Shane, you're mad at your husband for what your dad did? Honey, I'm not even mad at him anymore. Really? Don't get excited. There's new stuff. I, just, I guess I saw what happened to you guys, and I was just trying to do everything to keep it from happening to us. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. Van, it's not that simple. OK, I want to trust you. I, I do. I just, it's not that simple. I mean, I can't just stop feeling the way that I'm feeling. Cheyenne, believe me, you're not going to make our mistakes. You're going to make a bunch of new ones. Yeah, and forget about mine. Honey, you won't even know what half of your mistakes are until one day you're driving your daughter down to the airport, make up with her boneheaded husband, just to find out it was somehow your fault. And then we'll tell Elizabeth, no, no, no. It was Grandpa's fault. <laughs> Sorry, last time. Uh. Van, it's about time to go. Hi, Reva. Hi. And you must be Cheyenne. I'm Kate. It's so nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Cheyenne. This is my career and everything. But I won't go if you don't want me to. You won't? No way. What happens to us is way more important than our future. Go ahead. Yeah? Yeah. So wait, do you, do you trust me? Well, I'm going to work on it. Travel safe, and I'll be here to pick you up when you land. I love you. I love you. OK. Let's go. I couldn't fix it, so I made it into a vest.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>